Hey guys, what's up and welcome to a new Tesla update video. So today, as per usual, let's go over Tesla. Let's go over the market. Let's figure out what is happening today and what we can expect, of course, moving forward. Um, yeah, so with all that being said, let's just get into it. This is not financial advice, by the way. Don't forget, uh, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button as well. I am not a financial advisor. My uh, membership section is live. The link is down below, by the way, if you're interested. Uh, for just $2.99 a month, you can access all my intraday thoughts, posts, updates, etc., pretty much throughout the day every single day on tesla as it's moving and whatnot so that's gonna be good to know and i did talk about how you know i can't remember which post it was but i talked about pretty much how this move up to 180 to 182 is gonna be you know kind of spooky no this is 17 hours ago one of the one, one in the morning i was talking about how you know this should be this should be uh you should be careful essentially this move in the morning that we did you know spike up pretty nicely but you know a little bit you know a little bit careful somewhere down here anyway i don't want to read through all the posts right now and figure that out but yeah, so essentially the morning started pretty well, right? We had a nice push, right? You know, Google and Apple as well. As people are saying there's a bit of a rotation happening from like semis and stuff like that into, you know, the three underperforming, well, not really the Mag 7 or 8 anymore. That's just like a Mag 10 now. Anyway, nice push in the morning. Now, the first thing, first thing I want to start off with is actually the weekly chart. The weekly chart is the one I want to start off with. And the reason I want to start off with this one is, well, pretty simple. So this kind of gives you obviously a more overall, just, just an overall picture as to, well, what's really happening with the stock? Like, what's the overall like trajectory of the stock, right? Obviously, it's been down, but is it still going going to be down, right? Or is this maybe the place to bounce, right? That's the that's the the main question that you know everyone's asking, of course, right? No one knows the answer for sure, but we can get a, at least an idea looking at the weekly chart. So there's a few things I'd want to mention here that I'm not gonna lie, I'm not excited to see. Uh, uh, there's two things, the two main things really. Actually, three things, really. So the first one is going to be this uh, red kind of channel you can see here. This red channel I have moving uh, upwards, right, from the weekly chart. Or rather, from $100 on the weekly chart, right? Remember when we bottomed out here? So we've set a channel from the bottom of this wick here to the uh, bottom of the wick of the week after that, which was somewhere around, you know, 114-ish, right? And you kind of put them together. Now I want to remove the volume profile on the right for now. And you make the channel going upwards, right? Remember, we talked about this before also, how we, we, we had these like, channels like this that, you know, we had this one here that we broke down below, right? which wasn't great that, that was already a pretty bad start and you know this is another channel right this is a potentially more lenient channel but nonetheless a channel where you know again using it from the bottom over here where we did bottom right if you draw the channel like this and you know it connects pretty well to this kind of situation in this trading range if you will that we had uh, the past like month and a half or whatever it's been right where we came down into this channel and you know we came down to the top of the channel we held that and we also came to the bottom of the channel and we held that right we held pretty much the, the general range of this channel pretty much for the last couple of months and then we ended up actually even bouncing off of it kind of held it over here as well until we got of course this absolutely astronomical red candle on the weekly on, on the weekly chart of course last week right horrendous looking candle so that's not good obviously that's 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 pretty bad but the thing that's to note here is the fact that this candle yesterday's weekly candle not yesterday's last week's weekly candle pretty much broke us back out of this channel like it, we couldn't hold this channel like we did all of these weeks back here and you know very obviously so as well we crashed below this channel that's a pretty bad sign and where do we run up to today where do we go up to today and pretty much reject almost to perfection the bottom of that same channel that we did seemingly break down below on uh last week i'm not gonna lie that's a little concerning right that's not what you want to be seeing now there's obviously a possibility this is a false breakout or breakdown especially with the fact that well if you look at you know the descending channel that we're in over here with the two kind of white channels right here right you know if you look at it like that let me move this one for now you know we are approaching some potential support here right again the 175 level to below that we have pretty much the 160s we'll say right as a support which can obviously be an area that you know obviously bounces us back up that is a very real possibility but i'm not gonna lie you know i'm not a fan that we broke below this and so far it seems like we're turning this channel into resistance right it's a little concerning. I'm not going to lie. That's, that's definitely a little bit on the concerning end, right? Same concept over here when you just look at typical support and resistance. You can see the weekly candles, right? The, the wicks at the bottom. A lot of you know times we went down into this kind of you know low 180s to even the 170s range. Pretty much all of these weeks or the vast majority of them. But each and every single time we had a nice wick up and bounce. Which obviously shows that this area right here. Let me get this. Uh, where's the drawing thing out? I don't even know where the drawing tool is. Is it this? Where is the drawing tool? There it is, right? Which essentially shows that this whole area right here was a support, right? This was a support. What's happening now? Well, we crashed below it. 
And now we're taking this area that was essentially a support and now essentially turning it into potential resistance. So I'm seeing these kind of situations and I'm, I don't know if you guys hear that or not, there's people yelling outside. Anyway, but you know, we're seeing these kind of situations and that's not ideal, right? This is not what you want to be seeing as a bull. This is, we're taking pretty much all the support as well and now turning it into resistance on multiple levels. And as if that wasn't enough, as if it wasn't enough like that, if we go over and bring back the volume profile, let's zoom out over here so it gives us a better range as to, you know, this overall traded volume, what do you see? Well, I think it's pretty obvious. There's a lot of volume up here, right? Like there's a reason this area back here on these all these weekly candles, like the pretty much we'll say just around 180, give or take like five points or so, acted as a support. There's a lot of volume here. There's a lot of trading volume and we pretty much consistently acted as a support as we consistently kept trading down into it. Well, we're coming down into it. So naturally it's acting as a support. Now, after yesterday's weekly candle, we crash below all those volume profiles, and now we're going back up into it, which means it's acting as a resistance, right? Potentially, and so far, seemingly. Obviously, things can change, and I'll talk about that very soon, but this is just the overall picture. If, for this not to get uglier, and for Tesla not to just completely, you know, bleed down even further, something needs to happen this week, in my opinion, right? This week needs to end on a bullish note, like a pretty bullish note as well. Minimum above 180, like minimum above 180. Now, tomorrow we have CPI, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and I believe tomorrow we're also getting, uh, either tonight or tomorrow, we're getting Tesla China insured numbers. Those are two factors that can change this narrative, that can save this stock from, I'm not going to lie, not a great look right now. So just keep that in mind, right? Just I wanted to kind of really go over like a more broader picture today as to what, you know, the situation's really looking like, right? And again, not ideal. Same concept on daily. Like if we zoom out on daily and we go like this, right? Get, get a bit more of a volume profile range. Same idea, right? You can see exactly where we came up to, pretty much exactly as this volume right here increases, came right up into that. And now we're just constantly finding resistance. We're constantly having issues now that we're essentially, it's acting as a resistance, right? We're coming from being below it up into it. Not ideal. So keep that in mind. Those are the main things I'm looking at. Now, with that being said, obviously on the daily, we still have, well, we have this uh, channel down here that, you know, is acting as a resistance. That's number one, right? So that's obviously going to be acting as a resistance, right? Uh, if we can break above that, that's great, which, you know, unfortunately, is still a bit of a ways away. It's pretty much above at least 190 by this, you know, pretty much this week, really. You want to go above 190. If Tesla can go above 190 this week, it's actually looking pretty good. There, there is a very good reversal potential. But it's a big if, right? It is a definitely a big if. Like, for instance, you know, we still have some divergences, right? Like, we still have the RSI divergence, like, right there, right? As we're making lower lows, RSI is making higher lows. Same with the MACD, right? Even though it's flipped bearish, there is still a divergence. So, you know, there are still some signs, you know, where the bulls have hope. Let's just say that the bulls have a chance. It's not completely over, right? There's still an absolutely real possibility. It's just not looking super hot. And the bulls really need to step in, ideally, maybe after tomorrow's CPI and or the China insured numbers for Tesla to really save the stock from potentially bleeding down even further to at the very least 165. And if 165 ish breaks and we lose the bottom of this channel, which I accidentally just removed the top of the channel. So let me go ahead and quickly re add that from up here. Just a super rough uh, example, right? Something like that right? This top channel right here, right? If we lose this top channel as well, this is whatever, this is good enough for now. If we lose essentially this channel that we're in right now, like the bottom part of it, right? Which again is around 165. That's not good, man. That's gonna be really, really bad. So, you know, we really don't want to do that. So we're in a very kind of awkward situation right now where it's kind of like on limbo land, but it also feels like we're on the edge of the diving board. You know what I mean? Very, very, you know, spooky. So just keep that in mind, right? I just want to make sure that I just want to give it a, today. I want to make like an overall picture, like an overall assessment uh, of Tesla. Pretty much most important levels to the downside. 174.5, if that holds, great. If it breaks, 165 is next. If that breaks, well, Tesla is looking quite bearish. I'll be completely honest. It's substantially more bearish than even it looks right now. However, with that being said, if we break above 182, at least that's some, that's a nice glimmer of hope because that's where we today and Friday had issues. We came up to it both days just could not break above it. That volume profile is now acting as a resistance. Not great, especially the channel that I just showed you on the weekly, the rising channel from, you know, one the 100s. Not good, right? Not good. Uh, you know, obviously, we're still below both of these bands. Not good. Also on the weekly, we're below both of these bands. Not good, right? So this, you know, Tesla's obviously in a downtrend. There's no question about that. But, you know, like I said, there is potential to be saved. For instance, tomorrow can be that day. We'll see, right? 
So that's kind of the overall picture I'm looking at right now. And again, if we break above 182, I think the next level will be pretty much the gap of 188. But ideally, Tesla really wants to break below this red downtrend right here, which is going to be pretty much above 190 at least. Tesla can get above 190 this week. Uh, I think it's a very good possibility of finally flipping the momentum to the bullish side. But if it can't, in my opinion, it's still bearish. So we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. But those are the main levels you know I'd be watching for if I were you. You know, and Tesla did perform well today, right? Relative to the market, right? Market down 0.4%, QQQ at least, and Tesla up 1.4%. Obviously, now performance, no question about that, but it did give up the vast majority of its gains, right? That's not ideal as well. So, yeah, let's talk about something else. So, I want to talk about one more thing here. Let's go to options flow very quickly. So, there's something that interesting that happened. If we go to the one hour chart, well, I was telling my members too, like Tesla needs to close the one hour candle, the first one hour candle today, which was, I believe, this one here above uh 180 i think it was this one as long as you hold above 180 right we didn't we obviously didn't close the one hour candle above 180 which i got a sneeze <coughs> excuse me uh but notice that we came up to the upper band and we got rejected by it once again but what is even more interesting is the fact that once we came up to about 182 look what came in right if you go to the options flow this bad boy right here came in pretty much at 10 a.m 10 5 a.m Let's see exactly where that was. 10.05 a.m. Is that where, where that came in? That was pretty much almost to perfection at the top. Right on this massive candle right here. We can even go to the minute chart and see exactly even, even more precisely where that came in. 10.05 a.m. is where it came in, which is pretty much the top. So, yeah, it's pretty much the top. It's pretty much the highest candle. So whoever this whale is pretty much nailed the exact top. They came in above the ask, which means that they wanted to get in right here, right now. They didn't want to wait. They wanted in on this put right there. And then 3.6 million, 200 put for, well, this Friday. And that whale, assuming they're still holding it, or at least maybe they sold, has made quite a profit on that because they pretty much timed the exact top of Tesla today. And so far, it pretty much got smacked back down pretty aggressively. So that's pretty interesting to know. Otherwise, there's not a whole lot of options flow that's interesting. It's kind of all over the place, right? You know, the only other potential, you know, whale option flow that, you know, came in was these like block orders, which, you know, they're kind of so-so, right? You had a 1 million over here, but it's for June 21st, 180 calls. So, you know, it doesn't mean, it's pretty far out. So it, it, there's no like influence if, uh, on the short-term price action, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So that's, you know, whatever. And it's not a whole lot more. I mean, you have a sum came in that, for instance, 2.1 million right here for, you know, 130 put, but it's a year out, pretty interesting, right? But otherwise, it's nothing too crazy, right? You had 2.6 million and 1.3 million calls over here, but it's 150 calls and it's two years out. So it's it's a leap, a two-year leap even, and it's substantially in the money. You know, not something that will move Tesla up anytime soon. Let's just say that. So yeah, that's kind of the overall picture I'm seeing right now. Right? You know, it's just, there's definitely some things to be concerned about, but there's still hope. I don't want to make it sound like it's all over. Tesla's crashing. There's guaranteed nothing to happen to, to save the stock anymore. No, not, not at all. There's absolutely still possibilities, right? We're still at pretty important support areas. Like I said, 175 and below that 165. We still have the bullish divergences. It's still, it's still, there's still a very real potential, but there's some pretty, there's a lot of work for the bulls to do to reflip this narrative to being potentially bullish again, which like I said, 182, 188 and 190-ish are the three most important levels to break above for the bulls to potentially start, you know, even thinking about flipping this back to being bullish. But otherwise, that's kind of what I got for you today. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think down below. Again, if you're interested in joining my membership section, the link is down below for just $2.99 a month. This is the kind of information I try to share with my members, you know, daily as I see it. So yeah, if you like it, link is down below. Definitely check it out. But all that being said, thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.